My name is Zach Smith, and I'll be talking about the automation of the NEB Next uh, Ultra Directional RNA Library Prep Kit for Illumina, uh, constructing effective strand specific RNA seq libraries from low input samples. So, we have an, actually a number of uh, RNA seq library construction workflows already automated on our various liquid handling platforms, uh, including the TrueSeq RNA version 2, uh, the TrueSeq stranded mRNA, which is a Illumina qualified method and the Epicenter Script Seek Complete Gold Low Input uh, Kit. Uh, we're also uh, automating the NEB Next Ultra Directional RNA Kit, uh, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. The question is, is why would you bother doing directional or strand-specific RNA-seq in the first place? Um, well, in strand-specific RNA-seq, we're actually maintaining the uh, or originating strand information during the course of library construction using a DUTP replacement in the cDNA synthesis. Um, and what that does is it allows you to identify antisense transcripts, uh, determine the transcript transcribed strand of other non-coding RNAs, and determine expression levels of coding and non-coding overlapping transcripts. Overall, all, additionally, strand-specific RNA-seq allows for easier mapping to reference genomes, which can lead to a substantially enhance the value of your RNA-seq experiment and allow you to get more data for less money. So directional or strand-specific mRNA uh, as far as NEB's goals in making this kit was to produce a highly specific, uh, highly, you know, high strand specificity, high yields, a fast to simple uh, protocol, and uh, low cost. So they used a DUTP replacement um, uh, strategy, uh, which they have licensed from the Max Planck Institute. And uh, it's a published and highly regarded method in which what we're, and uh, their in, uh, kit enhancements include a faster streamlined workflow and novel reagents, um, resulting in the NEB Next Ultra Directional Library Prep Kit for Illumina. So this is a schematic of the workflow. So we're going to start with uh, either uh, total RNA or uh, poly A enriched mRNA or ribo depleted RNA as starting materials. Uh, we'll then go through uh, RNA fragmentation and random priming. And first, strand and, uh, and first strand synthesis as normal using a standard DNTP mix. During the course of, C of uh, second strand synthesis, we're going to use a DUTP replacement to mark the second strand. And then we'll follow through that with in repair A tailing and adapter ligation. So adapter ligation for the NEB Next Ultra Directional Kit involves using a uh, proprietary hairpin adapter um, that is then made and that is then converted into a standard Y-shaped adapter after uracil excision with the user enzyme uh, from NEB. We then do PCR enrichment, and then we have a completed library that's, that's uh, able to be sequenced on all Illumina sequencing platforms. So the, um, the NAB Next directional RNA produces highly strand-specific libraries. So you can see here uh, some data from New England Biolabs where they were comparing the non NAB Next Ultra RNA, which is a non-directional kit, and their ultra-directional with and without um, actinomycin D. And uh, what they were able to show is that their strands kit uh, does better, you know, it do produces its best work when working in conjunction with actinomycin D, which is known to block DNA-specific priming of a reverse transcriptase. Um, but even without that, it still does a fairly decent job of producing uh, uh, libraries that are effectively stranded, as compared to the non-directional kit that you see on the left here. So um, here's this is a basic map of the workflow again, just from an automation standpoint. So the blue boxes indicate uh, places where you will, um, uh, where your inputs are, and then we have various stops. So on the left hand side, you'll see the CDA synthesis workflow, where we'll start with either 50 microliters of total RNA, and go through mRNA purification using all uh, the poly A enrichment module from NEB, or we'll start with five microliters of pre-purified mRNA or ribo depleted RNA and proceed directly into mRNA fragmentation and priming. We'll then go through first and second strand synthesis and then double-stranded cDNA cleanup. And then that was, that's the completion of the uh, cDNA synthesis workflow. Uh, a user can stop here or they can choose to go into the RNA construction uh, workflow, which is on the right. Starting with our purified double-stranded cDNA, we'll then do end repair and A-tailing in a single step. Um, and adapter ligation cleanup. We have the option in the method of stopping at that point or proceeding on to PCR enrichment setup and running through that, uh, where we can also stop the method after PCR enrichment, or we can clean up the final enriched library and, and move on to uh, library characterization and sequencing. So just some uh, 
some numbers we were able to put together. So uh, for the cDNA synthesis method, for up to 96 samples, we were able to complete that entire workflow in five hours and nine minutes. Uh, for the library construction workflow, uh, four hours and 19 minutes for a total of nine hours and 28 minutes for 96 uh, individually barcoded strand-specific RNA-seq libraries. Um, those numbers were, uh, are substantially less than uh, doing 96 manually, which we estimate will take up to 21 hours which would result in a lot of annoyance on your technician's part. So we're offering su uh, some substantial time savings for this automation, automated method. So our auto automated method on the Biomech FXP includes a, an HTML-driven user interface that allows uh, any user the ability to just go ahead and run through the method without knowing a good deal of the specifics of Biomech programming um, or the method. So um, on the left, we'll see the uh, RNA, uh, the uh, CDNA synthesis uh, user interface. And we have a number of options here, including uh, running them. So we have an option of running the method in training mode. So if you're starting with a brand new technician, uh, one of the things you can do is you can click this box and it will run the method in simulation. And so that will allow you to train your technicians more effectively. Uh, you, when you're running it in live mode, you can enter the number of samples up to one, up to 96. And we also give you the option of whether or not you're going to use on-deck or off-deck thermocycling. Uh, if you choose to do on-deck thermocycling, we have, a bio, we have an integration with a Biometro T robot that uh, will allow you for, uh, to do that. Uh, if, however, you choose to go off-deck, uh, the method will then create several pause steps, uh, allowing you to, to take the plate off and put it on your thermocycler of choice. And then this uh, drop-down menu will control which workflow you're going to. So this will be effectively the first one you choose, whether you're going to do cDNA synthesis or you're going to do library construction. If you're doing cDNA synthesis, then you have the option of checking to perform the poly-A enrichment. If you were going to start with mRNA purified or ribodepleted messenger RNA, you would simply uncheck this box. So the library construction UI, which I'm highlighting now, also has a training mode option and a number of samples, and the option of doing on-deck or off-deck thermocycling, and several other options in the library construction workflow, including a user pause to add the adapter plate to the deck. Um, you, can, um, you have the option of uh, deploying the adapters in a custom-designed labware. In this case, we're using a BioRed hard shell, 96-well uh, plate. Um, whether or not you wanted to perform PCR setup, uh, if you're performing PCR setup, how much of a volume of pre-enriched library you're going to use as template, and whether or not you're going to perform uh, library cl or PCR cleanup. So, it's a very intuitive user interface that we think will make uh, operation of this method quite simple. Um, this is a picture of the cDNA synthesis deck setup. So, as you can see, we have um, we have a 96-channel wash station here, an orbital shaker under this plate. Um, our integrated T robot on this deck is right here. Uh, we have a static Peltier for the you know, to maintain our master mixes at uh, four degrees, and various Alps. And so this deck is actually reflected in the deck setup of our Biomech FXP, which is behind me. So, uh, if you're going to be doing uh, on-deck thermocycling, the method will add a stackable uh, lid that will then be put on the plate that you're doing the thermocycling to. Um, if you choose not to do on-deck thermocycling, then that piece of labware will be eliminated from the deck setup. And uh, to its right, we have a, a, an AB1127 plate stacked on top of a BioRed hard shell. So the library construction method takes advantage of the same deck setup. Uh, so when we have a 96-channel wash station, orbital shaker, and static pelt. Um, if you're doing on-deck cycling, well, we have the T-robot, and we have a variety of stacked plates. If you choose to, uh, to leave the adapter plate on deck and not do the adapter pause option, uh, then the deck will pop, be populated with an Acme cold block for keeping the adapter cool. Um, if you choose to, put the to do the adapter pause, then that uh, will just simply put the adapter plate in place without the Acme block. So, just going to run through some quick experimental data that we generated uh, in-house. So, we uh, ordered uh, adjuvant universal, reference, uh, universal human reference RNA and tested it out with 20 and tested it out with 25 nanogram and 100 nanogram uh, total in RNA inputs. Uh, we had diluted the NEB adapter down 1 to 40, uh, 1 to 40 after doing several titrations. And uh, these graphs below right here are basically just how our plate was laid out. So uh, this is some bioanalyzer data of our universal human reference RNA libraries at 25 nanogram and 100 nanogram uh, total inputs. 
Um, as you can see, our yields were quite good. Uh, the size distribution of the libraries uh, was very was uh, quite typical for an RNA seq library. Uh, and we also do not note the presence of uh, the adapter dimers at 120 basis. So we were very happy with how these libraries look. Um, we then shipped the libraries to uh, to New England Biolabs, where they did qPCR quantification of the libraries. And uh, our yields are stacking up quite comparably to uh, their manual libraries that they made in-house. Um, so at uh, our yields are actually at uh, lower inputs, our, our standard deviations of our qPCR results were actually tighter than what they were able to achieve manually. Um, so we were very pleased with those results. And then NEB con uh, conducted a single uh, MySeq uh, 2 by 100 cycle paired in run, uh, loading eight picomolar onto the flow cell on uh, the eight, li eight libraries that we generated uh, on this automation run. And uh, we had very high pass filter rates, you know, north of 90%, as you can see here. Um, this is just some quick, fast QC data of uh, the, the quality of our libraries on a per base basis. So what you're seeing here is the, uh, the average QC score along every base or every cycle of the, of the sequencing run for both our 25 and 100 nanogram inputs. And as you can see, we're, we're above, 30, above Q30 in both cases. Uh, just some more fast QC data showing the, the mean quality scores for both our 25 nanogram and 100 nanogram put inputs. Uh, so we're generating very high quality data. But is it reproducible? I mean, one of the, the great selling points of our, bio, of our Biomec is the ability to create up to 96 libraries simultaneously. Well, what we're looking at here is the reads mapped back to the reference uh, using Top Hat 2 and uh, then put through uh, um, cufflinks to look at transcript expression correlation for both our 25 nanogram and 100 nanogram RNA inputs. As you can see uh, on, the log to the right, on the graph on the left, we're looking at the log of uh, log FPKM, FPKM of our two of our 25 nanogram inputs, and you can see that we have very high you know, R squared correlations of up to 99, uh, 0.99. Uh, and also on the right, you'll see that our 100 nanogram uh, libraries also have very high correlation between, you know, within the groups. Uh, looking at the sequencing read composition, we're overwhelmingly looking at coding region with low uh, percentages of, of ribosomal RNA. Um, so we're actually targeting the uh, parts of the uh, genome that we're interested in getting at, which is the coding regions. And our transcriptome coverage is very uniform across the length of the transcript. Uh, so we're not seeing any three prime or five prime bias in our samples among our various replicates. We do see a drop in complexity for the lower input samples, which is not terribly surprising. Uh, so you'll see on the left are our 100 nanogram inputs for replicate one, two, and three. And on the right are our 25 nanogram put inputs for replicates one, two, and three. And you can see that our percent duplication among those, very, among those lower input libraries is indeed a little bit higher. Uh, but we feel like this is very solid data. So the other question we would wanted to ask is, you know, as far as comparing our 25 nanogram and 100 nanogram inhibitors, well, how do those libraries stack up to each other? So this graph shows our 25 nanogram uh, FP, FPKM information for uh, on the Y and then the 100 nanogram on the X, and we're seeing very high correlation between those two libraries. So uh, regardless of whether or not it's a 100 uh, nanogram input or a 25 nanogram input, we're still seeing very decent correlation between the two samples. Um, so we also were, wanted to look at uh, local strand specificity. So this is a GAB APR1 and uh, just an IGV graph uh, showing that in read one, all of our reads are pointed one way, and in read two, all of our reads are pointed the opposite direction. If this was a, if this was a non-stranded library, we would see a roughly even uh, match uh, or mix of, of uh, read directionalities. Uh, as you can see, we're not effectively seeing that. So we're confident that these are highly strand-specific libraries. So, um, in summary, uh, the automation of the NEB Next Ultra Directional RNA Kit provides the ability to build up to 96 high quality directional RNA seq libraries for sequencing on any Illumina platform. Uh, we have a highly flexible user interface that allows you to choose between the cDNA synthesis and library construction workflows uh, to vary your sample inputs and uh, as far as number of samples and uh, to get different method outputs depending on your requirements. And our optimized pipetting uh, allows users to employ low concentration sample inputs uh, for directional RNA-seq, which allows you to generate high quality technical replicates or to use precious or limited samples for next generation sequencing.
And with that, I would like to thank uh, our collaborators at New England Biolabs, including Daniela Manafo, and Dea Rodriguez, Elaine Demignata, Brad Langhorst, and Stephanie Graber, as well as uh, Mary Blair, Elisa Jackson, Julie Moore, Herbeck McCulter. So, does anyone have any questions? <laughs>